Disaster recovery has evolved significantly, and for most of us, backing everything up overnight to tape just doesn't cut it anymore. Why? It's not because there's anything wrong with tape. Tape is still a great archiving tool, and when you store tapes off-site, they're safe even if a flood or other disaster strikes your data center. The problem is that overnight part. Can your business afford to lose a whole day's work? Because if something happens at 9 p.m. and you have to restore back to last night's tape, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's not acceptable for most businesses and most users today. Luckily, there's a lot of DR options available to you, but it can be pretty overwhelming. And you're going to need to look at different technologies for different server workloads because they have different priorities to the business. How do you choose? You'll need a way to quantify your recovery needs. Let's look at some of the terminology and metrics that can help with this. There are two key metrics to keep in mind as you prioritize workloads for DR purposes. One, RPO, recovery point objective, a measure of maximum acceptable data loss in terms of time, minutes, hours, or days. An RPO of two hours means that the most recent backup has to be no more than two hours old at the time of an outage, so I don't lose any more than two hours of data, max. The second is RTO, recovery time objective, the target maximum allowable time to recover from an outage. An RTO of four hours means systems have to be back up and operational no more than four hours after an outage. Let's illustrate that with an example. This data center has an RPO of 24 hours and an RTO of 12 hours. Here's a timeline we can use. At midnight on day one, the tape backup has started and it takes three hours to complete. Now, even though it finishes at 3 a.m., the backup is really only current as of the snapshot that happened at midnight. That's important. Now we go on working through the day, and at 9 p.m., a rack of servers dies. We've lost those servers. We have to recover from the tape backup that started at midnight. So let's count. That's 21 hours of data lost. But our RPO, recovery point objective, is 24 hours, so at least we're inside the SLA. Let's say it takes six hours or so to repair or replace the damaged equipment, getting the new equipment or components physically installed. Then it takes another nine hours to get them back up and running, installing and updating and configuring all the software. That's 15 hours from when the outage began, but our RTO SLA was 12 hours. Not good. We missed the SLA. You'll want to look at each server workload in your own environment and determine what RPOs and RTOs make sense for your organization. That'll depend on how heavily the business relies on them, your own IT capabilities, and of course, what you're willing to spend. Along with RPO and RTO, you'll want to set an availability SLA for your server workloads. Availability simply means how much of the time the services will be online, or, flipping that around, how much downtime you can tolerate. Typically, availability SLAs only count unexpected downtime. They exclude planned downtime like scheduled maintenance. You'll hear terms thrown around like 5.9s, 4.9s, and so on. But what do they mean? A lot of the time, they just mean that someone's expecting things to be always on, always available. But we can do a little math, just a little, to show you what they actually mean. As you can see, 5.9's availability means 5 minutes of downtime a year. Not many IT services deliver that. I think of telcos when I think 5.9's. How often do you pick up your desk phone and not get a dial tone? I can't even think of the last time that happened. That's 5.9's reliability. Working our way down, check out 90% availability. That translates to three days of downtime a month in the data center. Maybe okay for that print server hardly anyone uses, but that's about it. Not surprisingly, there's big differences in the technologies and their costs between these availability tiers. If you need four or five nines availability, you're looking at clustering, mirroring, full data center duplication. You don't have time to rebuild anything. You need hot standby, near zero downtime, and it's going to cost you. Down at the 90 to 90% uptime, you can save a lot of money with inexpensive tape backups. It's going to take you a while to restore, but if you can afford the downtime, tape can be a very economical alternative. And in the middle? If that's where you see yourself, you're not alone. The major analyst firms agree this is where the majority of workloads lie. They don't really need zero downtime and the expensive duplication that requires, but they do have RPO and RTO requirements in the one to four hour range, and that's beyond what tape can deliver. Fortunately, there's a solution. NetIQ offers high-performance disaster recovery solutions that deliver availability, RPO, and RTO that comes close to mirroring and clustering at a price point much closer to tape. For more information, visit netiq.com.